And I do want to say, you know, I, I realize I said something yesterday evening when I first started sharing is something about the Irish, but um, I probably should have said this also. Anyone who has been in the Esther classes, anyone who has been in the Esther classes, you also, this is, um, this isn't just a teaching for you, the Irish and people who've been in the Esther classes. This is, um, this is your heritage. And it's your heritage in a real personal way, not just sort of, well, because we're Christians or whatever. But this was meant for you guys. This was meant for you. This was up and coming. This was already locked and loaded. <laughs> And it just got put on hold for a while. So I'm asking you particularly to be in tune. And that also on the other side sort of leaves it with, um, you know, maybe if that's not your case or whatever, maybe this will just be like some guy out there gabbing and blah, blah, blah. So I hope it's not that. I hope seeds are going into you and blessing you. Um, but um, anyway, I wanted to say that to the, the Esther people particularly. Um, Joshua chapter 5, did I say that? Yes, you did. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> up to chapter 5, what we did was we, we were with Israel, as it were, as God was getting ready to bring them into the land. <clears throat> um, we have to realize that the crossing of the Jordan in God's mind, isn't really bringing them into the land, but bringing them into the death, the, the Jordan death, the death uh, that is required um, as you go into the land. And if you will, it is, guys, how long I say this, Lord, help me. It's, it's like an official, it's like an official, this is it. But there's going to be a personal application of that cross in Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be literally personal in their flesh. It's going to be as real as real can be. So as long as, you know, as long as we read these scriptures as history, then we're not going to get much. We're going to say, well, that applied to them. But we know that the Spirit of God can take these things and make them the, not just the Old Testament version, but the New Covenant version. And, uh, and I, I personally, and you know, I don't know anybody that preaches Christ and crucified that doesn't share these scriptures. You know? it's, yeah, just, yeah. it's just a part of it. But very few have I ever heard except one sitting back over there that's ever really shared on Gilgal? Not to the extent that, you know. And, um, and I'm hoping that Ben will be able to get a chance to uh, share with you some of the things that the Lord shared with him. And uh, in some ways I'll be going around that because I, I, I remember what you shared and I believe it's the Lord and I believe it's... it's uh, I believe it runs along with this. So they have done that. They have the ark, which represents the, the Lord's presence, went in first. Jesus died, as it were, as himself. But he also brought us into his death. And um, which, in a sense, is two different deaths. One is his death, but he never sinned. But he's being, he's bearing the sin, but he never sinned. He's dying for us. He's dying for others. But when he's bearing us, we're going into the sin offering of his death. So it's really two different deaths, and I don't want to get into that. I'm just going to share that. And again, I believe that the Word of God is seeds, and I believe the Lord has given me the ability to plant seeds instead of it all be about a great understood sermon uh, it's rather 
a whole bunch of seeds that he'll bring up at his time and in his way for you. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Joshua chapter 5, verse 1. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. All right, so this is the effect of the cross. This is uh, when the enemy starts hearing about that which is Thank passed you, into the cross and died and come out on the other side and Christ is your life. They know they are <laughs> defeated already. They don't even have to fight the battle. Amen. That's good news. Yes. Amen. No, that's good news. Amen. So it's not the same. Like, if for, no, no, I mean, really, honestly, picture this. If you're on the other side and you haven't crossed over, they're ready to take you. Mm -hmm. They're feeling strong. They're, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they, they can rush you, bull rush you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they can bull rush you. But you get on this side of the cross. Praise God. And the enemy, they're... If their heart melts mm -hmm. and they have no more spirit anymore. All right. Is the cross valuable? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that a trick question? Yeah. Yes. Same as a witch. All right. So this is the doctrine of the cross valuable? No. Not in light of this. This is not a doctrine. You, you could write all this down, put it in a little booklet, make the cover really nice, and then show that to the Amorites and see what they do. <laughs> They'll laugh, take it, yes, probably yes. eat it, <laughs> scare you, <laughs> and then jump on top of it. Yeah. You know? But this... If we can only really, really get the spirit of what's going on here, this is it. This, you can know of a surety that I have given you the land and that I am among you. <clears throat> so, in God's mind, this is, this is the height of the trip so far. <laughs> okay, it's the height of the trip. Now, the, it'll be even higher after they... They come to the launch pad, and God has said, okay, there's this and this and this, and these things need to be set in order. And when they are, when they are, you'll be ready to take the land. But you have to pass through the Jordan. You have to pass through, as it were, in Him. And you have to know what that means and not just preach it without any understanding at all. It's like, yeah. God, help us. How about we do that again? Can we pray about yeah. it? Yeah. Father, we just ask you to help us to understand what that means. Yes, and and it's, the scriptures are great. And many times the truths that I've heard over the years are great. But I want it. We want yes, it. Yes. We yes. want yes. it. We're in yes, working Lord. in us. Yes. And yes. The reality of it to overrun our minds, yes, our Lord. carnal minds. Yes, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, not because we're worthy, but because we love your Son. And we want your Son, and we want to give you your Son. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. So, um, God before this time in Egypt had done many miracles, you know, all the things that he did in Egypt, but the enemy as a whole, we're not just talking about the Egyptians, the enemy as a whole that they would face trying to take the land, different, different, the enemies that you face when you're trying to take the That's land right. are different yes. than the Egyptians. Amen. Mm. So, that, so all the miracles in Egypt has not done one thing to all those enemies Amen. that you're going to face. Yes. It hadn't scared them. It hadn't moved them. It hadn't you know, touched them in that, that sense. Um, the Red Sea, yeah, floating Egyptians, 
But every MRI, well, you can just go through all that list. Mm -hmm. Because I can't remember them, and I have a hard time pronouncing them. And that's why they're enemies. That's not my tongue. Enemies to my tongue. So, so um, not until the cross are the enemies finally scared. Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. And so now there's an end. Now, not until the cross, there's an end. And, and as it were, if in the Spirit the Lord breathes this to us, finally there's going to be an end of everything that keeps trying to keep us from taking the land. Amen. You know, you, Jesus. these things, these they're like, some of you don't know this, but in Texas we have chiggers. They're like chiggers that are burying, burrow. They will burrow into our minds and into our flesh and mess with us. I'm not talking about the chiggers. I'm talking about the Amorites and the Gergeshites and the, the Shiites. And... Never mind. We will not get political. Did you just erase that? <laughs> I took note of the timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another set. Never mind. I'm not oh. okay. Never mind. Okay, so at Gilgal, they finally come to rest, but it's not really rest yet. It's not rest because they embrace the cross as a whole and they embrace the, the, the cross of Christ for Jesus and somehow that included us crossing the Jordan. It was Jesus' death and that included us, Jordan right. River. Amen. It was Jesus' death and that included us and we came across and then he closed it up. Mm -hmm. well, there's another application that is incredibly important. Incredibly important. So let's look at verse uh, 2 through 3. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children at the heel of the foreskin. So what is God saying right now? With uh, We just crossed the Jordan. There was a death. He's saying it's time to apply the cross personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In your flesh. Not just in your... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or in your mind or in your... How you, you know, oh yes, I see it, I see it. Well, <coughs> you need to do more than see it. Mm -hmm. It needs to be cut into your flesh. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what's about to happen. That's what's about to happen. Gilgal is the place of uh, Gilgal is the place of in the land application instead of everything that's been trying to be applied outside of the Lord. land. First time. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I'm, yeah, I'm glad. Some of you. Yeah. Should I say it again? Yeah. Yes. Gilgal is the place of in the land application. Mm -hmm. Not what they were just across the Jordan or when they were traveling through Moab or around them or, or all these other nations or going through the wilderness. None of that was in the land application. It's time to get there. Mm -hmm. It's time to get there and it's time to get the thing that's going to start this thing really rolling instead of, think about the wilderness. I mean, they're fighting the enemy constantly. The... the um, uh, Amalekites, there's one out there. Uh, <laughs> the Amalekites uh, kept sneaking up on them from behind and, and attacking the weak. Mm -hmm. The uh, All these other ones, the Moabites and all of them, uh, Ammonites, they're all coming against them. And, and everything Israel did, check it out was defensive. 
like a shield and then only reacting after they act. Think about that. It really was the case. They were all defensive. They didn't attack anybody until they got attacked. So they're always, you know, have you ever heard of being defensive? Yeah. <laughs> they're on the defensive in the wilderness and in the process up to this point. But things are going to change. Internal things, not just, you know, there's a great reality and I see it and I died with Christ and, and I'm really something. Christ is my life and boy howdy am I something. Sorry for my text. <laughs> No. This is this is a big, big time for them in Gilgal. The landing strip, the, 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 the preparation, the, 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 the getting the troops moved in, getting the equipment in, and all this kind of stuff, because we're about to have a movement that's going to sweep across this land, and we're going to take it for God. Yeah. 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 So I'm trying to communicate how important this was right. to them. Or how important it was to God's heart. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. Because Amen. all the talk about what, what happened spiritually across the Jordan mm -hmm. won't mean anything until that those sharp knives are applied. Mm -hmm. Those wow. sharp knives are applied. Though the cross is applied wow. personally. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now, now. We just stepped into the land, but we're not taking it yet. We're just getting ready. Now the sharp knives are not for the enemy. That's right. uh -huh. They're for us. Yes. Yes. We're not going to turn them on the enemy. That's right. We're going to put it to us first. Woo! We're going to yes. apply it across to us. Amen. In our flesh. Yes, Lord. Now that's where it's going yes, to happen. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. You noticed a couple of the wordings, didn't you, that it says uh, about uh, um, uh, the second time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think there's more of an explanation uh, in the next few verses. But yeah. So, anybody here ever had problems in the flesh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. There's several over here. There's several. And I, I appreciate them admitting it. You liars on this side. <laughs> but there's, you know, the um, until we submit ourselves personally to the Lord's cross, to the cross of Christ, you can't defeat your flesh because you're still letting it live. You understand me? You're yeah. still letting it be part of who you are. Amen. And you can say, well, I rebuke you. <laughs> You're the one pumping blood through me. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I rebuke you. You're the one that's, that's given me life. You can say all. You can, you can pray, oh, God. Anybody ever done that? Oh, yeah. God. Mm -hmm. yes. Just get rid of my flesh. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes, it did happen at the cross. Nice. But you have to apply the cross to Amen. you. You have to settle it in your flesh. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Can I get a thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, Joshua chapter, I mean, uh, verse 4. It's still chapter 5. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way. Did you know that everybody that came out of Egypt didn't die? It was only the men of war. You know, it was. Because they didn't obey and go in and take the land. It wasn't everybody. It's was only them. And we'll, we'll read it all, but what it's, here's what it's going to tell you. Their children, not all the children that came out of Egypt, but the children of the men of war were raised up in their stead, and they were circumcised then. Because if, if one of them was born in 
Okay, let's say the first year that they go into Egypt. Now, everyone was circumcised before they went out of Egypt and they go into the wilderness. Um, and then the first year <clears throat> into the wilderness, mama has a baby. Then 39 years later, when they get ready to go into the land, he's never been circumcised. He's 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Or one that just happened last week. You, you see what I'm saying? A wide range. It's a wide range, yeah. And but it's all it all has to take place. It all has to be in order to get to take the land because there is absolutely no reason to go and try to take the land if in your flesh God hasn't settled the cross. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's not, because then, you know, it's, it's going to be a lie. That's it, right. You know, it's like him, you know, you come out with a big sword, and he comes out with a gun, and he goes, <laughs> you know, and you go, ow. Anyway, um, so, um, that, that Romales, even all the men of war died in the wilderness, by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Verse 5, now all the people that came out were circumcised. Okay. But all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war, till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. They, 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 the men of war didn't. The Lord said, go in, let's take the land. They says, where's grasshoppers? Ah, oh, grasshoppers. <laughs> I don't know why this stuff. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, under whom the Lord swore that he would... Not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us. A land that floweth with milk and honey. But their children, whom he raised up in their stead, that's the men of war who died. Then Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way, meaning passing through the wilderness. So... As it were, there's two different circumcisions, or at least two different times in which it was enacted. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to assume that the first circumcision, when they came out of Egypt, that the first circumcision should have had the same impact that this is about to have. Mm -hmm. But they didn't understand the land they ate. Or the deliverance that happened mm -hmm. about water rolling back and then and now they just experience it again yeah. so, but now they are on the brink literally on the brink yeah. of what God wants to do and it's going to be massive you, it's Lord. going to be massive you, Lord. and it's going to be a taking what God said was mine that's what he says mm -hmm. this is mine so, um, yeah, okay. When you read that, you can, you see that in the heart of God, they, I mean, it's like you are no longer in the wilderness. He's trying to get that across. Mm -hmm. You're no longer in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. What if in their mind, there's this crossing the Jordan was no different than That's any right. stream or anything they crossed Amen. on the way to get there. What if it was that? What if they right. didn't get it? What if they couldn't conceive of it? What if, what if Joshua, Joshua, the one God instructed to lead them into it, what if all of his words 
meant nothing in the sense that they could not, could not understand. We are out of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. We are on the verge of the greatest move Amen. we've ever been involved in. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus. Applying the cross Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. that was spiritually enacted, crossing the Jordan. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to make sure it's in our flesh. Yes, Lord. Amen. Lord. Make Amen. sure. Yes, Lord. Lord. So that yes. that's not an issue. So that a little enemy in your flesh that's doesn't right. go, right. oh, well, you know, that's not dead. That's right. Mm. You go, shut up. <laughs> you could just be a little guy. You know, jet it to you. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Joshua 5, verse 8 and 9. And it came to pass, and it came to pass, and it came to pass. Do you ever notice these words? Yeah. It came to pass. Thank you, You talk Lord. about it all day long, but when is it going to come to pass? Uh-huh. Right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. You know, and it came to pass. And that's, this isn't the only place in the Bible that says that. You know, these things are important. These things are important. If it says it came to pass, then you need to realize that this is it's coming coming pass Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. Hmm. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off yes. you. Yes, amen. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day, till they were made whole. What is our definition of being made whole? We say, oh Lord, you know, make me whole. Make me whole. And we may be thinking of, you know, fix all the... the Amorites and Canaanites in me and make them calm and you know so that I am wholly given to you because I don't have problems with that or cut out the flesh until you've healed up from that yes, yes. and now Amen. I'm with the Lord that's that's my heart and that's where Amen. I stand with him Amen. so when you're wounded, especially if it's a deep wound, um, eventually it can become scar, scar tissue, right? Mm -hmm. You've ever got a real bad wound and you still have a scar from it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then what that means is that, it, that that wound gets worked into your flesh in the form of a scar. Mm -hmm that wound gets worked into your flesh in the form of scar. He says this important. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to look at the New Testament scripture shortly. All right. So a scar is a mark left by a deep wound. And he says, then the reproach of Egypt is rolled away. Okay. When the cross is worked in you, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this way. A rolling, a rolling away, a removing. Circumcision is the removing of the flesh. At Gilgal the flesh is separated and rolled away. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's keep your place there, but let's go to Galatians chapter 6. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is just read these verses that I want to read to you, and I want you to tell me if this applies in any way to everything we've been talking to about tonight. <laughs> okay? You just see if you can, if there's any 
connecting dots. All right, ready? Galatians 6, 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, come on, see if you can, availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a new creation, a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy upon the Israel of God, from henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Woo! Yeah. Let's go pray for that right now. Would you pray? Yes. Lord, you just opened your heart and you spoke to us from the generations of heaven, right from your heart, Lord, that was in your heart that we wouldn't corrupt your way anymore. And I just pray that each of us will get a mark, your marks, Lord, yeah. and we will press towards your marks and we will get your marks and you sear them into us, Lord Jesus. And your name will be on our foreheads, Lord. Just see our scars, Lord, in a real way, the way you're bringing us to us, Lord. You brought us here, Lord, to give us these, to give us these marks, Lord. And thank you. May we receive them. May we receive them. Yes, Lord. And may they receive them. And may they be seeds in us and grow in us. Yes. Mm. May our lives be a scar, a scar path, Lord, if you know what I mean, that they grow into a scar, that we'll take a path, that that seed will grow into a scar. That our path from now on will be from your hands, Lord, your crucified hands, from the generations of heaven, from the beginning, Lord, saying this path that we take will not corrupt your way, Lord, anymore. And we'll just, the seed, Lord, the path will let allow that seed to grow into the scar into us, Lord. And you will look at us and you will see your crucified son. Just the way you want, the way you saw it in the generations of heaven, the way you saw it in the beginning, Lord. Let it be, Lord. Let it be in everyone in the for this generation and for everybody. In the front row, the middle row, the back row, Lord. For everybody, Lord. For us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Paul is standing on the other side in Gilgal. And he's looking back at what happened, what just happened. He's, he's looking, as it were, at the, at the death of Christ and us being born by him into death so that we are dead with Christ. And he's saying with all strength of mind and heart, God, God forbid That's right. that I should glory in anything but the cross that just took place as we crossed the Jordan. Yes, Lord. Uh, that we glory in anything else, anything that's come before, any event, yes. anything compared to this, that we glory in anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, the cross of the ark. Yeah. How's he say it? By whom I am crucified unto this that I'm leaving. Yes, Lord. Yes. And I'm entering into all that he had planned and all of it based yes. on the life of Christ. Yes, Lord. I am by whom I am crucified. The cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. There is a break. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And there is an entering in and there is a leaving. Lord. And that can't be theological, or I hope so. Mm -hmm. It has to be the real deal, Amen. right, Steve? Yep. Amen. So then he says, for in Christ Jesus there's ne neither circumcision nor uncircumcision. He's not, he's not voiding out what they said, but he's saying for us, it's not just the act of physical circumcision or lack of it. It is that we have to be a Amen. new pre yes. We have to step in. Amen. Anybody ever read the story about Noah? Right. <laughs> anyway, maybe I'm pretty sure y'all have. Anyway, 
When he and stepped out of the ark into all of that freshness, it was not as it was before. Yes. It was a new life. That's right. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God. And Noah just builds an altar. He glories in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, but a new creature... And as many as walk according to this rule. What rule? Obey your parents. No. <laughs> oh, no. It is this rule that now that is gone. Amen. My old life is not me anymore. Amen. You have to yes. say that. You yes, have to Lord. believe that. But you have to yes. see it and yes. know it. Yes. And then move toward it. Yes. In your flesh. Yes. So. Yes. So. Uh, as many as walk according to this peace on them because there's not going to be all the you know flesh <laughs> there's rest yeah. does rest sound good to anyone yeah. yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well then go to bed <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> and then he says and mercy upon the Israel of God. He's calling you the actual Israel of God, that not wow. them. Wow. He's saying that was a shadow. You're the actual Israel Amen. of God Amen. that has entered into this. Yes. From henceforth then, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not circumcision it's the cross applied. It's the circumcision of what? The heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. The circumcision of the heart. See, the scriptures talk about that. The circumcision of the heart. The heart. For I bear in my body the marks, the wounds of the cross that have entered into me, and I've been made whole now. I've been made whole. Mm. There are scars now, they're no longer wounds. It's the marks, it's glorious to me. I love these marks of the cross in my flesh that, mm -hmm. that show me and the enemies, the devil, the That's right. Gergeshites. That's right. I don't belong to you. That's right. I belong to Jesus. Amen. For Mark. Yeah. And he says, well, prove it. You know. That's right. There you go. And they're real marks as far as the Lord's concerned and as far as the enemy is concerned. Because <laughs> you've embraced that cross that you crossed the Jordan with. You've embraced it and you've said, I'm personalizing this. This is going to be my cross. That's right. Amen. Not my message. That's right. Yeah. Praise God. So I wrote, those who have the marks of Christ crucified in their flesh will never want to return to Egypt. Amen. Those who have the marks of Christ crucified in their flesh will never want to return to Egypt. Your heart's been crucified. It's been, it's been circumcised. Mm -hmm. it's, it's matched up with his death, with his wounds. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all wrapped up in one. It's all of one. And, you know, you know how, how the enemy can, you know, you know, just torment you and press and do all this stuff and try to get you going and, you know, all the stuff that he does. Yeah. When this happens, I'm telling you, it doesn't stop. It just doesn't have any effect. Not on that. Not on that. Not on that stuff. That's right. Because he is, you have accepted that. God forbid that I glory in anything. Anything except the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Which cross? The one he died on? No. Yeah. The, by which I am crucified to Amen. the wilderness. 
Yeah. The Moabites. And it's crucified unto me. What was the quote? Yeah. Jesus. Uh, what was the thing you wrote down? Oh, those, uh, those who had the marks of Christ crucified in their flesh will never want to return to Egypt. Mm -hmm. It's really cool, just like, you know, since the end of Genesis, you know, the beginning of Exodus, Egypt has been there, like, the sword. Your nemesis or something. Yeah, yeah, just a cause of a lot of their problems. And it isn't until, like, you would think after they came out of Egypt. Yeah. That's, but no, it's right then. Now have I finally dealt Roll with that the Egypt. reproach of Egypt. I mean, that's like way, that's just like a whole other generation, but there's like Get down the road. Wow. several, several yeah. books later, and it's like. Both now, directions. Like, <laughs> it's good both directions. Wow. No, it wasn't just crucifying the wilderness, but it was even before the wilderness, and also you know, it's it's all of that. Uh, that's really cool. Amen. Like, you know. yeah. Amen. Alright, I won't belabor that, but I, I am telling you especially this was prepared by the Lord for you, some of you, a long time ago and he's told me to release it now and he, he didn't tell me that until the other night this is this is yours this is yours and i believe by saying or, or by me telling you that i believe that all the force of what was in his heart is for you amen okay all right let's go to verse 10. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at Eden in the plains of Jericho. All right, so they got circumcised on what day? The 10th. The 10th day. And then here it says... 14. Yeah, so they entered the land, okay? They came in, they entered the land, they made camp at Gilgal... They were all circumcised. And once the wounds of separation from the flesh are healed, bingo! It's Passover. Is that a coincidence? Probably not. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> now it's time to eat the lamb. Praise God. Now it's time to really eat the lamb. Okay. <clears throat> All right, that all this is so significant. It's just so significant. It's full of firsts for Israel. Okay, so think of yourself as this being your time. Mm. It's full of firsts for you. Mm. Okay, it is. Because um, you've got the first Passover in the land ever. That's God's wow. feast. Mm. The first Passover in the land mm. forever. And it happened in Gilgal. Wow. Their first Passover was Gilgal. We're going to see how precious Gilgal is to God. Oh my God. He's, it's just, it's going to build up, okay? It's the first time they ate lamb after circumcision. Mm. Mm. Not the lamb of redemption. But the one that they will walk by now. You say, well, where do you get that in the New Testament? John the Baptist at one time saw Jesus walk, or saw Jesus, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. There's the Lamb of redemption. But the next day he sees him walking. It didn't say he sees him, it says he sees him walking, and his disciples were with him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And his disciples left him and followed Jesus. It's the disciples' lamb. Wow. Okay. Said two different times, but the first time it said, that taketh away the sin of the world, the lamb of redemption. The second time he saw Jesus walking, and he went, this is a walk. This is not just a, an event. 
Yeah. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And John's own disciples said, they turned and started following him because they got it. They didn't just run after him and go, Save me, save me. They said, We're supposed to follow this Lamb. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to follow him. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Joshua 11, uh, verse 11, I mean, 5 11, sorry. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. So the next day they celebrate what? First. Feast of unleavened bread. First time in the land. <laughs> First time when it was done, where? Gilgal. Gilgal. First. First. This is Gilgal is getting all the blessings of the land. <laughs> you know, they're getting all the first. And everybody goes, it's Jerusalem, or it's this or that, or da-da-da-da. And they go, you know, all this. But here is the landing strip where God is preparing them in every way possible so that Praise they will the be Lord. ready, that oh, they will yeah. be unhindered, that they will have thrown off the, the chains and go, let's do it. Amen. Let's Amen. go. Let's Amen. take the land. Yeah. Wow. Anybody feel like that? Yeah. Yes. Kelly, you want to pray? Yeah. cross to come in a sharp sword, Lord. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. Man, sharper than we've ever known, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, in ways that can bring forth your Son, in a way that we have cried out for for so many years, Lord, that we can receive the true Passover meal, Lord, in the sense of just feasting with you with all, all the enemies that is us, Lord, just the defilement. We can give you that, Father. It can be real. Mm -hmm. Father, we just um, we just open to you right now. We just ask that your spirit would be, even in this moment, quicken to us the importance of this, of this yes, place, Gilgal, spiritually. Open us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just say yes, Lord. Yes. yes. We just say yes, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where did the Feast of Unleavened Bread come from? It came from when they were in Egypt and uh, they ate the lamb and they came out and then before they fully crossed over, they were supposed to eat unleavened bread because leavened bread will puff up, it will get bigger, it will swell up, it will be exalted, if you will. And, you're, and he said, uh, when you go out of here, it's uh, also the spirit in which you do it. And it, you can't be puffed up. You can't be full of yourself. But what what happened in the wilderness? They were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why he kept saying, none of this is really going to be any good till you get in the land. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be any good. No need, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. we can preach it. We can all, you know, go, ooh, yeah, we got it. You know, <laughs> but it's not going to be having it until you eat it in Gilgal. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because all of it's being applied at once, and you're in the land of application. <laughs> it's different. you got to realize it's different. If you don't realize it's different, this is just the same story over. That's right. That's right. This isn't Egypt, folks. Amen. This isn't the wilderness. This is the land that he wants you to enter into. Praise and God. take. Yes, yeah. Lord. And take. Yes, Lord. Said, um, let's see. Well, it mentions right here in verse 11, and they did eat of the old corn of the land on the next day after the Passover unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. And then verse 12 says this, and the manna ceased on the morrow, the meaning that next day, after they had eaten of the old corn of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat the fruit of the land of Canaan that 
that year. All right, so what does that mean? Well, in the wilderness, they're in the wilderness, and, you know, there's no food. It's a wilderness. There's nothing there. And God's, God's keep, God keeps saying, there's a land that flows with milk and honey. Chocolate milk and honey. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and you can go to that land. But they're passing through this and they're saying, well, where is it? So what does God have to do? He has to, you know, there's much to this, but we'll just say, he, for now, he gave them miracle bread. They lived off of miracles. Okay? It wasn't natural. It was supernatural. But now they get into the land and they start eating of the for the land, they start eating out of the corn of wheat that has fallen into the ground and died and brought forth much fruit. Mm -hmm. John 12, 24. It's, it's, it's fruit of the land that has gone through death. Mm -hmm. They're eating death. Wow. Yeah. They're eating that which has died and they're becoming the resurrection of that, but it's the life of Christ in them now. It's no more, the, as soon as they ate of the land, bingo, that was it. No more manna. You're not going to live off of that anymore. Wow. Mm -hmm. You're going to live off just, you know. It's, it's the difference between all of the nine plagues being miracles where God did this and that and did this. And then the tenth one being the Lamb of God that just dies. Okay, so now it's miracle, miracle of manna, 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 manna. You get into the land. And here we don't, eat, we don't live off of miracles. We live off of the, of the corn of wheat that falls Amen. into the ground and dies. Yeah. yeah. Now is the Son of Man glorified, Jesus said. Uh -huh. Except a seed fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it'll bring forth much fruit. So they're wanting to put that seed into them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Right. But to put yeah. seed into them. Mm -hmm. To partake. Mm -hmm. As soon as they do, God goes, Yay. Can you see the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit go, Okay, shut her down. <laughs> Man, I, no more falling from that. I don't know if there's a big machine written on, but anyway, I shut her down, whatever. You know, the idea being, that's it. We, that machine won't, you know, Amen. it's going to sit up here and rust. Because we're not going to do that anymore. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Do you see all that's happening in yeah. Gilgal? Yeah. This is like crazy stuff Thank because it's all on another Jesus. ground yeah. than what they Amen. ever were before. And so we, if we walk through the wilderness, if Thank we griped Lord. because there wasn't any food and then he gave us manna, if we griped it because of the leadership, because, well, why did you bring us out here to die? You know, take us back to... To Egypt, at least we had whatever they had. Leeks. Garlic. Leeks. garlic and leeks. I don't know why they like garlic, because it leaks. Just complaining about everything but eating manna. Did it change them? No. Give me another miracle. No, it won't change you. Just... If you would just do one more miracle, that's all I'm asking. No, all I'm asking is you eat the seed. You put it inside of you. And you become, because that's what Jesus said. See, John 24 also has John 12, 25, <laughs> which includes us. Then he starts talking to us and says, come on, follow me in this. Amen. Time to start eating seed. I've walked all this time, these three and a half years, giving you miracles and doing and yeah. supporting you and healing this and doing that. But it's time. Amen. I'm going to go in. I'm going to eat this seed. And you're going to eat this seed. Jesus. And we're yes, going to start living Lord. off the same thing because guess what? Yes. We're entering the Woo! land. Amen. We're Amen. entering the land. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Verse 13. It came to pass when Joshua was... Uh, you know what? I'm going to stop right there. 
Yeah, I'm going to stop. This is really good stuff it's coming up. So we'll have for sure at least one more go at this. Uh, and this next part is, is very, very important. Uh, there's a lot of angles and stuff. It's not just surface. Mm -hmm. da -da -da -da. There's, there's a real interchange between Joshua and, and the Lord. And We, it's absolutely important if we're going to ever get into any kind of leadership position that we begin to understand this next phase because it's big stuff. It's big stuff. So we'll stop right here. Yeah. Well, is there any hope? Yes. Yeah. yes. yes. Amen. Well, yes. the truth is, again, what happened in the Jordan is settled. Yeah. Remember the, yeah. the river hard. closed back up. We don't have to go out there. No. But we can tell you that all day long. And you'll still worry unless you get it in you. That's right. Yeah. Unless you get the cross in your flesh. Unless you can bear the marks of the Lord Jesus yeah. in your own flesh. So that someone asks you about it and you say, look. See my hands? You know what I'm saying? Jesus. I'm crucified with him. Amen. Yeah. I know I am. This is my proof. And I'm not talking about a physical. I'm talking about the... Amen. Yeah, I'm talking Jesus. about having it at work in you. It's the same thing that happened at the crossing of the Red Sea. I mean, the, the Jordan. But it's you getting it. It's yours personally. Amen. You have laid hold of it. And you're not just standing on the other side preaching, you know, hey, look at that. <laughs> it's great over there. Yeah, over there with Jettitude. <laughs> <laughs> Two of you over there going, hmm, we got it. <laughs> Amen. Somebody want to pray? Scott? Father, we truly want these things to be real in our hearts. Mm. Help us to eat, to eat of your table, Lord, eat of, of these these things that you are you are laying before us, Lord. We, we want them to be nourishment, not just things that go in and out, Lord, things that 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 are lessons or, or any anything like that, Lord. We want the reality of these things, Lord, to become who we are. Yes, Lord. Become who we are, Lord. Yes. As we take yes, them Lord. in, Lord, that they yes. would truly become who we are. Yes, Lord. Father, we just... We don't. We're tired of of just embracing teachings and, and yes. embracing doctrines, Lord. We Amen. want you, yes, the Lord. life and reality of who yes. you are. Yes. We want that oneness that you you speak of so often, Lord. That's what our heart is. Lord. Yes. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That that, that is your desire also. It was your desire first, but Lord, don't, Holy Spirit, don't let us up. Don't let, yes. don't let us stop. Don't yes. let anything get in the way, Lord, of, of, of where you're bringing us. Lord, we give you permission to just be relentless, Lord. Amen. Be relentless. And help us, Lord, to be relentless as well. Amen. Work that in us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.